Oh man, we're almost done with the first set. It's nice to have Miranda leave us alone for a change. Carson, Jennifer, have you heard what's happened at the British Museum? One of the mummies walked away. Oh, come on, Nigel. You're kidding, right? Jennifer, I'm serious. The museum recently bought a mummy of a cat. Now it's gone, and one of the curators saw it strolling out the door. <laughs> ah, the British Museum's finest hour. Weird. Come on, Carson. Let's hurry down to the British Museum and see what we can find out. Oh, Cecil Grange really should have lost his job for this. He and Greaves can go hang out in the unemployment office. Look at those reporters! That must be the curator who saw the cat mummy come alive. Let's get close and hear his story. And then when I came back into the Egyptian room, the cat mummy was gone. I looked all around, and that's when I saw it slinking out the side door. Wow! It was quite abominably ugly. No hair, of course. Rather wrinkled-looking, but very clearly a cat of the Egyptian breed. It must have chewed its off all its wrappings while I was out of the room. I ran after it, of course. It's one of the museum's most valuable new acquisitions. But when I got to the door, it was gone. There was an open window near the fire escape door. It must have escaped that way. Cecil Grange, the more you talk, the worse it gets. A 2,000-year-old cat is on the loose somewhere in London. You must tell your readers to return this cat at once to the British Museum. This way leads to the Egyptian rooms, where the cat mummy disappeared. Mr. Smedley is the security chief of the museum. Maybe we can help maybe we can help him look for clues. Yeah, I don't know about Smedley. He probably shouldn't be in charge. Look at him. Sorry, but I'm afraid you must leave. The Egyptian exhibit is closed for the rest of the day. It's okay, sir. We're detectives, clearly. I'm a twelve year old girl, but you can let us in. May we examine the scene of the crime? Sure. Afraid not. As you can see, there's nothing to see. Everything's tidy. No clues of any sort to tell us what caused this kitty mummy to wake up and wander off. Well, you weren't any help. Get him to talk, Ansem. Tell me, Chief Smedley, what is the museum staff doing to recover this priceless artifact? We have issued bulletins to the City of London Animal Rescue Agencies to be on the lookout for a 2,000-year-old hairless cat. Oh, Clive Smedley. You just make it worse. It's bound to be rather hungry. The London Animal Rescue people are like, what the fuck? What? Is there any chance the mummy was actually stolen? Not if Cecil Grange is telling the truth. He says that when he was examining the cat mummy, he left the Egyptian room for just a moment. When he returned, he saw a cat leaving, not a person. Was the side door open when he left? Here, let me check my notes. Er, no. He told us the door was closed when he left. He said it is usually closed, but not locked. They run a tight ship over at the British Museum. Percy Grange is like, whew, at least this isn't my fuck-up. Er, not Percy Grange. Percy Trib. Percy Grange, now that's a scary thought. Oh yay, it's Gordon. Nigel's friend Gordon is here. He's a bit of a creeper. Let's find out if they've heard anything else about the mysterious cat mummy that walked by itself. Cats can be good companions, although I prefer a good sheepdog. 
But if you want to talk about cats, you should look up Mrs. Grimalkin at the Ritz Hotel. She's a world expert on anything feline. Yes, she's a famous she's famous as a cat expert, collector and psychologist. She's balmy about cats. She really loves them. She might be able to figure out where a two thousand year old cat would hide. Great. Now let's see if Carson and I can figure out which direction to go to reach the Ritz Hotel. Let's pull out our map of London. We're down here at our house in South Kensington. Which direction do we need to go in order to get to the Ritz Hotel in Piccadilly, on Piccadilly in St. James? Yes, first try! Hooray! Right, the Ritz Hotel is almost directly northeast of our house. You'll be there in no time. And we don't even get to talk to Gordon. <laughs> Hello, Jennifer and Carson. We were just talking to you. What? Talk about ADD. We've been following the case of the cat mummy on the radio. All of London is on the lookout for more clues. So far, no one's found anything. There was a picture of the mummy in last month's museum journal. Have a look. I just happened to bring it with me. The mummy is about two feet high and tightly wrapped in yards and yards of old linen cloth. A painted mask covers the cat's head. The mummy dates from about 30 B.C. Most interesting. There's also a picture of the fancy coffin the cat mummy came in. It's called a sarcophagus, and it has hieroglyphics on it. Hieroglyphics? That's the picture alphabet that the ancient Egyptians used. Yeah, we already had a mystery about that. And it so happens I can decipher Egyptian hieroglyphics. Let me see if I can figure these out. It's an ancient blessing. It says... May the power of Bastet keep you safe, to be a loving companion into the next life. It's talking about the cat coming back to life. Nobody here is any help. It's like their dialogue all just abruptly ends. Oh, isn't she the bitch that got fired from the British Museum? No one knows why. They never tell you. Hey, that's Dr. Pels, the scientist. Nigel told me she used to work at the British Museum. Until they canned her ass. She's, like, really passive-aggressive towards them, too. I heard about the mummy that came to life on the radio. Don't believe a word of it. I'm sure this is a story made up by Cecil Grange. I'm sure Cecil is trying to hide the fact that the museum has misplaced a valuable mummy, the fools. A museum misplaced? A mummy misplaced in a museum? Do things like that really happen? Well, apparently they do quite often. Especially when Cecil Grange and Buckley and Triv are in charge. I warned them when they fired me. I told them that without my expert care, something like this would happen. What do you think happened to that cat mummy, Dr. Pels? And why did they fire you? Well, that mummy didn't wake up and walk off by itself, I tell you. Somebody helped it. Mark my words. She's so bitter and angry. This way leads to one of my favorite rooms. What do you mean your favorite? It's always changing. Oh, now it's a cat exhibit. Fantastic. Here in the mammals exhibit, they have a display all about cats. Maybe something here will help us figure out where this 2,000-year-old Egyptian cat has gone. The cat family includes a small house, includes our small house pets, the massive lions of Africa, the sleek tigers of India, and the speedy jaguars of the Americas. They are among the world's best hunters. A cat's sensitive ears can swivel on its head, helping it pinpoint where sounds come from. Its eyes are excellent and can see well even in dim light. Padded feet help it stalk its prey silently. When a cat strikes, blah, 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 blah. That was useless. The mammal's exhibit is always useless. Oh, I love Dr. Pels. She's such an angry, angry person. She probably hides in the bushes outside Cecil Grange's house at night, like trying to scare him, throwing pebbles at his window and making weird noises. 
Wow, Mrs. Grimalkin's cat sure is noisy. Even though she's locked it up in that box, I can still hear it meowing. Crazy bitch, think you can just walk off with a mummy? Well, children, I just arrived in London today for the cat show in Covent Garden, but I'll be glad to help you find your lost cat in any way I can. It's not our cat, Mrs. Grimalkin. It's missing from the British Museum, and it's about 2,000 years old. How extraordinary! <laughs> Don't look in my bag. It's an Egyptian cat mummy, Mrs. Grimalkin. It supposedly walked off from the museum's Egyptian exhibit, at least according to Cecil Grange. We hope we can figure out where it went. A cat mummy, how fascinating! I'm so sorry to hear that it is gone. That would have been quite lovely to see. Cats are quite my passion, you know, and I crave anything that has to do with them. Weirdo. Really, I wonder if the cat wasn't catnapped by an unscrupulous collector. Some of them are quite mad about st old stuffy things, and would pay a lot of money to get their hands on one. But not me. Don't look at me like that. Your cat is making a real racket, Mrs. Grimalkin. Why do you keep him co cooped up like that? Oh, I hate to do it. Usually old Ramses follows me around everywhere like a dog, but he's a breed of cat called Sphinx, and right now he's, uh, shedding lots of fur. Very sneezy. Yeah, that's it. Lots of fur. <sighs> so I keep him in a cat carrier. Don't look at him, though. A tour map of the British Museum and a copy of the Museum Journal are stuffed into Mrs. Grimalkin's purse. The Museum Journal has a picture of the cat mummy on the cover. Is that it? Oh.